Mic check one. Get out of here with them. We we got shoes, yo. What's up, Balls Deep fam? To another episode of Balls Deep with Devin and Jovan, where we dive balls deep in the hottest stories in sports. If you're new to the program, I'm your host, Devin. And today, Shun, uh, filling in for Jovan is Nico. Uh, welcome, Nico. How are you doing today? Uh, pretty good, pretty good. You know, just uh, glad to be back in the program. I'm always in the podcast, you know. <laughs> like some UFC. Yep. So, as Nico pointed out, we're going to be talking about some UFC. Uh, because we had a, a very big card this past weekend. Uh, it was gruesome. Uh, you know, in, in the nutshell, it was gruesome, uh, for sure. You either walked out of the, the arena, put to sleep, or with a broken leg. That's just what it felt like. <laughs> um, but uh, let's, let's just get to it. So the we're going to be talking about, try to recap the main three fights of UFC 261 and hopefully get... The opinion of uh, Nico's opinion on future fights that Giovanna and I already touched on in the past. If not, then it's okay. But we'll we'll definitely try to you know recap what hap what happened this past Saturday. Uh, and we'll we'll begin with um the the third fight uh of the night of the main card I should say, which was uh, Valentina uh I don't even know Chef Shevchenko. Shevchenko, yeah. Versus um, uh, Jessica Andrade, which Jessica Andrade is a former champion uh, oh, yeah. in her own right. She beat one of the other people who fought on the card, uh, Rose Namajunas, for her title in the strawweight division. Um, and before she ended up losing to, I, I believe she lost to uh, Wei Li, right? Sean Wei Li, yep. yeah, yeah. So uh, she moved up and she challenged Shevchenko for this fight. And... It, it seemed like it was going to be a really good fight move, going going into the the night. I personally had Shevchenko winning, no questions about it. But um, Andrade felt like she had a, a like a strength over Shevchenko, like that she could exploit, and that, that was her knockout power. Because the only she has really good knockout power, but she needs to get close to you because her reach isn't all that you know that great. Yeah, she's very little. Yeah, she's very small, but she. She packs a punch for sure. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I personally figured, you know, Shevchenko might keep her distance as, you know, with the championship mentality she has. She has a reach advantage, so just keep her distance so you don't take that. But she also took punches from Nunez in the past. So if she could take it from yeah. Nunez, I'm pretty sure she could take it from anybody. So exactly. I personally had Shevchenko, but Shevchenko said when Andrade said that, you know, she felt like she could beat her. She didn't want to count, you know, dispute that because she wants her to to go in thinking that, so that when she puts her, you know, when she takes it to the deep end, she now is in her own mind, and it, rather than you know her disputing it and then having not you know come to a as big of a surprise on fight night, but in the wraps, Shevchenko, I want to. I don't. I don't want to use this word, but I'm gonna use this word. She manhandled Andrade in a sense because she woman handled. Yeah, yeah. woman handled. Yeah. <laughs> so she. It, it wasn't even close. She pretty much just dominated the whole fight um, it, it, until you know the stoppage in the second round. And I and I personally feel like the ref stopped it a little too late because once she put her in the crucifix, it, it was it was over. And it, and it wasn't even that. It's like. She put on the crucifix and she was elbowing her and she, you know, cut sliced her on one side and then she turned her head. But when she turned her head back to the side that was sliced, he should have ended the fight because she just she got like eight extra punches in. and and and, yeah. and Shevchenko even said it like she felt like the fight should was well, should have been ended a lot sooner. Um, yeah. But yeah. What, what was your opinion of the fight? Yeah, man, of course. I mean, like, I mean, same here, you know. I, for me, for, I, I personally think Valentina is the best ever. Even better than Nunes, but that's just, I, I just think if Valentina would have been a little bigger, she could have beat Nunes, you know. But that's a different story. I mean, yeah, like you said, man, I didn't see, uh, you know, Andrade beat, winning 
anyway, you know, like at all, you know, like like you said, I actually had to think about that, but exactly, you know, like <laughs> Valentina has taken shots from uh, Amanda Nunes before, you know, what do you, what makes you think that she's not going to be able to take punches from Andrade, you know? Yeah, Andrade, you know, he, she's like, has like the most knockouts, I think, in like women's like strawweight history or something like that. That doesn't matter, you know, it doesn't matter. You're fighting against a fighter that it's just on another level, you know, Valentina's just that good, you know, Valentina's, he, she's not going to let you touch her. And, and, you know, and, and she and she also showed us, like, you know, her wrestling is really – I already knew it, but she, maybe she wanted to prove a point or something, you know, because <laughs> she was doing fine. She was doing fine in the stand-up, you know. She was, she was you know, tagging, tagging her whenever she wanted to, you know, just keeping her distance. And then I don't know where she started taking her down, and, and that's, what she, well, that's what she did for the rest of the fight. And, <laughs> and yeah, it was, a, it was complete domination. Yeah, the ref stopped it a little late, but it, it's a little hard, you know, and, like, when they're on the ground sometimes, especially if the other fighter is not, like, out, you know, because, like, cause like, you see fighters getting in crucifixes all the time and getting out of them, you know. But, but yeah, no, I, I agree, you know. Maybe after a couple of good el- good elbows, you know, after a couple of, like, good elbows were going through, you're like, all right, all right, you know, it's time to, it's time to call it, but... Definitely a little late, but I mean, I, I mean, you know, like I said, just Valentina yeah. just showing what she does best the, the, and why the she's was, never gonna. Leave. The ref was essentially just trying to give her a chance to escape yeah, and, little, and possibly oh, yeah. come back, but yeah. by by that time it was it was over. And I agree. I, yeah. I think Shevchenko had she was kind of uh, I don't want to say bragging, but she was showing off how well rounded of a fighter yeah. she was just in this one fight. Yeah. Just in this one fight. And before this fight, I was banging the table for, you know, a third fight between Amanda Nunes and Shevchenko. Uh, Probably not going to happen. Just just listen to me. Just listen to me. I I hope. Just listen to me. So so Nunes (laughs) has wiped out not just one, but two divisions. She really has no competition for her at all. So who is she going to fight? The only other person that I can think of is Shevchenko, right? But... You know, Shevchenko is in a much more competitive division, although that she's literally been the only champion in that division since its its existence. She has a lot more competition. So, and I was thinking about it, I was like, okay, Andrade's a really good competition. If she puts up a good fight, maybe, maybe exactly. this fight doesn't happen. But the way she dominated this fight, I literally looked around the room and I looked at Jovan and I'm like, there's no question about it. She has to fight Nunez next. Nunez, no. Nunez is like literally has nobody and Shevchenko has been the closest one to beating beating her, her the, the second fight between yeah. the two where it was super close and I honestly yeah. feel that if a third fight were to happen between them Shevchenko might pull off the victory but if she loses again the only reason why she lost is because of how big uh Nunez is in comparison yeah. to her but I think Shevchenko in terms of skill has the best chance of beating Nunez or giving Nunez competition yeah. Uh, because oh, she, who knows is better off just retiring at this point if she doesn't fight Shevchenko. Yeah, I I I I probably agree. And to be honest, man, like, yeah, I don't think there is competition for Shevchenko either. I, unfortunately, I think they both already like Shevchenko already like she's only been the champion for two years and already wiped out everybody. Yeah. Like, she, there's not they had to bring somebody from a lower division that you know they thought they were okay. Maybe she'll give her, no no. It wasn't even close, you know. And and same thing with Amanda, you know. So yeah, bro. I mean, like I said, I just think I just think. The thing, the thing is that it's hard to make that third fight because, like I said, I think Amanda is definitely bigger and and it, look, it happened to me this weekend. The, you know, like <laughs> like that those extra pounds matter, bro. Like you know, they they do they do matter a lot. You know, and especially I can imagine especially at that level. You know, yeah. and 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 I mean, I think skill wise, Valentina might be a little bit better. Just you know, just it. it I I know Amanda's the goal. No, no, no. I, I'm no, not. You know, no, I, she is but, but it's so close. You know, I, it's so she, close. She you know, is, it's, just, it's right she there. She's better in it's terms right of skill. I, I agree. I think so. I think. I, so I mean, too, you know, but I mean, Daniel Cormier even said skill wise, Valentina is better, and it's not even close. But um, it's just the. That's not taking anything from Nunez, but just the size no, of Nunez. No, no, no. She's going, the best ever. He even admitted, sure. skill wise, Valentina's better. But yeah, yeah. if you're going like head on, like head to head, Nunez exactly. is going to win because of her size difference. And, yeah, and, I agree. And it's not saying that Nunez isn't talented because Nunez is just as well rounded as Shevchenko is, but she has the additional yeah, power oh, yeah. that Shevchenko just doesn't have because of the exactly. additional weight. 
Yeah, she has. She yeah. she has. But and she has that knockout ability, you know. Yeah. But you know what fight actually I was hoping to see, but it's not gonna happen now. I was actually hoping Wei Li would fight Valentina because I because the oh, I you know Wei Li. Yeah. In my in my eyes, Wei Li was you know I mean the way she's been fighting until not well until last fight, I thought she was unbeatable too almost you know like her her striking looked really good and 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 I was like hey why not you know like just make the super fight go ahead I mean it, you know? it could still but possibly happen after... it, it it look Andrade moved up after being champion who says Wei Li doesn't go up and, and yeah um and and you know compete for another title Wei Li's but gonna wanna fight again I, man. If, but but before going into, but so before so I guess we'll just jump into the next fight because um I there's something I want to mention in that regards you know the next fight the the competitors that are in the next fight so you mentioned Wei Li going into this fight Wei Li was like this is gonna be I I had thought it was gonna be fight of fight of the year had fight of the year potential but I had it <laughs> as fight of the night this was my prediction fight of the night um and he even said it too. He he said he said it had fight of the night potential. I looked at him and I said it has fight of the year potential. Just look what you know, um, Wei Li did with with Joanna, like that mm-hmm. was that fight was amazing, and yep. and Ro- and look what Rose did to Joanna. This fight is going to be amazing. Yeah, and, yeah, that's what you you know you would think. I, I was thinking that, and, <laughs> but then I also said. She's been gone for a year. It's not her fault that she was gone for a year. You know, this whole coronavirus pandemic, um, if it, it it affected everybody, and with her, yeah. I feel like it affected her a lot in her occupation because she was stuck in her country she, uh, to train. So she didn't. She was unable to, you know, be as resourceful as she might be in terms of reaching out to certain trainers to work on certain things because she was limited to what she can, you know, do. Um, and I, I, I was like, I, I think she'll be fine, but how rusty will she be tonight? And Jovan was like, oh, she'll be fine. I'm, you have nothing to worry about. I'm like, I thought she was going to be I, fine I was like, too. I agree. I'm just, that's something that I worry about. And then yeah, yeah, yeah. the fight happened and you already know what happened. Mm. Uh, Rose came out. And looked phenomenal. Usman even said it after he was just watching her train. He said someone's getting knocked out. He predicted the knockout, but that timing was perfection. Just because oh, yeah. she was able to squeeze her kick underneath Whaley's arm to get yeah, to her in between her guard. Yeah, yeah and she just put her. Well, she didn't put her to sleep because she wasn't out cold. I mean, she, I mean... No, she wasn't out cold, but she was done. And, and, and she doesn't need to be out cold, bro. No, no, no. She, she didn't know what she was she, standing, she bro. Was, oh, no, yeah, yeah. She, she was, so she wasn't out cold as it, like, put to sleep. But yeah, she yeah, was, yeah. you can see in her eyes when Rose yeah. jumped on her to, you know, give her hammer fist. She was gone. Like, she was zoned out looking at the stars. Um. So, and she tried to dispute that she wasn't out. She wasn't out. She wasn't yeah, out. Yeah, but you, but you she can't was, give her. But she wasn't. Give her. She was there. She was uh, she was awake, but she wasn't present in the moment. Exactly, because exactly. That, that's what, that kick knocked her out of, that knocked her into La La Land in a sense. Because she, that's what that's what I told me. I was mad. At people were like, "Oh my god, why is she complaining?" I'm like, "Bro, she just got knocked out, and like she pretty much was knocked out because she yeah. she didn't know what she was saying in that moment. You know, bro, like you know Joe Rogan. He didn't. He he actually for a while he didn't interview fighters after they got knocked out because. Your mind's not there, man. Yeah. Like you, you, you know, you just your your brain just got rattled around in your, you know, like you're not completely there. So, like, I mean, I understand that if she complained in that moment, but I don't she, know if she, she said anything after I, that. I you barely, know, but... I feel like she barely understood what just happened. Exactly, because, exactly. Yeah. Because I, I don't even think she realized, like, the magnitude of that kick. Yeah. And and, yeah. and its effect. Because when she stood up and the ref was basically like waving the fight off. She was falling backwards, so she couldn't even yeah. stand up straight. And she's over here complaining, and she's like stumbling. Like the fight was yeah. clearly over. Um, you see, it happens. You see, it happen all the time it with was a, fighters. That it was a perfect out, stoppage. You know? um, yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> I I just feel like um, she she was a champion. It was kind of hard to lose your title in that fashion, uh, in in that magnitude. It was the first round, so yeah. uh, I. But what I was going to go at, is, and why I mentioned it, is you mentioned Wei Li. And I mentioned, you know, Val- uh, Valentina possibly fighting Amanda Nunes. That would be my first option in 
terms of her next competitor. But why not set up a Valentina versus Rose matchup? That would so, be my second option. So um, that's not gonna happen it's, it's, because they're friends. I, I know they're friends. They used to train together. But they're not. They're, yeah, they, but they, they're, they're not. They used to they're train together. But in in a sense, it's like, what else are you gonna do with either fighter? I I agree. I mean, not, look. I mean, Rose has more options because oh, that sure. flyweight division, that flyweight division is still open. There's still good up and comers. Oh, the, the strawweight yeah, division. Valent- yeah, for a strawweight, sorry, yeah, but but you see Valentina, you say you know Valentina and Amanda, they they have nobody, you know, it's it's kind of like they already wiped their divisions, they're completely, you know, it's not even like up and comers or like somebody's no no no, no. it's over, like there, there's nobody else, kind of, you know, so it's kind of <laughs> like, and also it's like okay, but like you need to do a lot to be able to fight them because you're not gonna be winning like a a fight like eh, and then fight Valentina or Amanda, you know, I, I'm, I'm you know, they don't yeah. knows better, so. There's a lot of things to to do there, you know. I I think I think I think probably what's gonna happen is Rose gonna get a rematch with Wei Li. You oh, know, for I mean, sure. I think Wei Li, Wei Li a rematch. A hundred percent. She she she's built herself up to that point that she could ask for a rematch. You know, she's she, she she's been killing it till now. You know, so she can ask. For, you know, I think she can ask for a rematch and they'll give it to her. You know, and uh, now what happens after? I mean, obviously Wei Li wins trilogy. You know, then Rose wins. It's kind of, I mean, Whaley, you know, she'll have to figure something out because, you know, I mean, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. so I, I see where you're going. And that's why I, I put Rose as option number two for Valentina and not option yeah. number one because Amanda Nunes and Valentina both have no other competitors. So why not create that third fight between the two? It's the money yeah, fight. Yeah, uh, Dana White seem, and the UFC seems to, you know, kind of go, want to go in a different direction, which I don't understand why. I mean, that's probably the best thing to do for the women's division of uh, women's yeah. divisions i should say um just because it's the mega fight it's the money fight fans are gonna oh, want to yeah. see that fight especially with fans now in attendance just imagine the arena and and the mag and like the atmosphere that you're gonna be in should that fight take place and i'm gonna say this is like an this is gonna be like an unpopular opinion i guess but I think if if Valentina and Amanda Nunes fight again, that literally, in terms of skills, might be the biggest MMA fight of all time. Because you're talking about the two greatest, not even, not, it's not even, this is not a debate, okay? The two greatest female fighters of all time, for sure, fighting against each other. Like that's not even like you know what I'm saying. Like that's literally term, one of the biggest fights. In terms of skill, I I'd, I'd agree with you. Obviously, but, I know it's not like it's not like as, as you know. I know people are not as maybe as like oh my god. Obviously, like I don't know. Maybe like a, it would have been like a John Jones, Anderson Silva, like an Anderson Silva GSP because yeah, they're you know they're they're women. You know, I, I I get it, I get it. You know, but but bro, in terms of skills, you know that that I yeah. I mean, the, that's the like, women's division in the UFC yeah. is as big now as it's ever been. So exactly, that, no, no, that, that, that would be a, that would be an amazing fight. Uh, and I I think. Valentina would have her best chance of winning in a, yeah, in a, yeah, in a third fight she definitely has, um, because yeah, she yeah, has I, the two fights under her belt and you've seen the progress yeah. she made from the first fight to the second fight and Amanda Nunes has been fighting at 145 so her, having to come back down to 135 for the first time in some time that could affect uh, that could affect her I, I don't think it will but it, it could affect her because she's mm-hmm. losing weight which means she's going to be losing some of her power as well yeah. um and you know Valentina, the two fights were already close, you know. Yes. So it's not like, so it's, you know, it's it, that that's why it would make sense. But we just have to see and wait what they do. You know, it's yeah. gonna be crazy. And, and 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 Rose definitely has more options. I think Wei Li definitely deserves. That should be her next fight. Is Wei Li? Yeah, but, he's going to. But yeah. what what I'm saying is, Rose versus Valentina is a nice <laughs> second option if you don't get uh, Amanda Nunes versus friends. And yes, they've been tra- they they were training partners at some point in time, but this wouldn't be the first time in history that yeah. you know friends or you know like uh, teammates, former yeah. training partners have fought. So I agree, I agree. That would be an amazing fight, yeah. and and whether that be mean Valentina dropped uh, down to one fifteen or Rose goes sure. up to one twenty five. Um, I mean, regardless, that fight would be yeah. Oh, oh I, I I agree. I agree. Kids. I mean, I agree. Especially, <laughs> I mean, look. If Rose beats like Whaley again, oh my God! I think a hundred percent, not even debatable. But the problem, the problem with that is that I know it's happened before, 
but they're different. They're women, and Rose is a very like. I mean, I don't know if you've ever like. You know, Rose is like a very like. Y- yeah, she's yes. Yeah. You know, she's very like. You know, like she she probably considers Valentina like a close you know person to her because I've I've heard her talk about her before and stuff. So, I don't think it would happen. But but believe me. I would love to do that if I have him, bro. I mean, ex- especially especially if Rose beats Whaley again, no doubt, bro. We're talking about pretty much the best three, like you know, like fighters in each division. Like you know, I mean, like Amanda, you know, and Tina. Then Rose would be for sure the best one by a, by a, <laughs> by a lot, you know. So, yeah, man, you know, that would be fun too. So you know, we'll see, we'll see what happens. But I, I'm I'm oh, so happy too, for Rose because she definitely faced adversity after she lost the fight to Andrade. Because she was dealing with a lot of like mental self confidence issues and things like that, and that's kind of why we seen at the end or even in the beginning, like she was getting introduced and she's saying, "I'm the best, I'm the best, I'm the best." Yeah. So then at the yeah. end when she won, her coach was like, yeah. "Who's the best?" She goes, "I'm the best." He goes, "I've been telling you this for years. You're the fucking best." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so, Pat Barry. That's his husband, and he used to fight in the so, UFC so too. So that was too. that was a dope moment. But my favorite moment of the night was when they put the title around her waist and she just started bawling out crying. It it, oh, it, yeah. it touched my heart. And and it, it the reason why it touched my heart is because, like I said, she's a very vulnerable fighter. She's very relatable. And that's why so many people love her as a fighter and why so many people were chanting for her that night. They were, they were yelling... Doug Rose, oh, yeah. Doug Rose. Everybody loves Rose. Yeah, Everybody loves Rose. Bro. So, <laughs> so to see that moment, it was very. It, it came full circle because she lost to Andrade. She came back and yeah, beat yeah. Andrade, just to you know earn her way back into title contention and ultimately uh, win in the fashion that she did because she did get knocked out. That's how she lost. Yeah, so then yeah, to yeah. get her title in a first round yeah. knockout against uh, someone yeah. of Bailey's caliber oh, is yeah, exactly. super impressive. And if I'm not mistaken, I think she's the first uh, female fighter ever to re re uh, regain re- the title obtain, that she re- Yeah, regain her. Yeah, so you know that's a big accomplishment, you know, and 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 that shows you that you know perseverance. You know, she she kept going and she's a champion again. So yeah, for sure, for sure. And and um, I, I forget what I was gonna say, but <laughs> uh. I, if I remember, we'll, we'll get back to it. But, oh, yeah. but oh, yeah. no matter if you if you can't forget, because you know, get into the main event. So, yeah, exactly. You know. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, if I remember, I'll bring it up. If not, it's fine. Uh, but to go into the main event of the evening, it was you know built up as great as you possibly could build up a fight. It was Masvidal Usman two. In reality, I I fig- I felt like it was more just Masvidal, Masvidal Usman one. Um, because they they had Masvidal had a full training camp to you know train for Usman. Usman had a full training camp to train for Masvidal. There was there's no you know there, there was no you know barriers yeah, put, like put in put in, put in the direction where like or, if someone gets yeah, caught yeah, COVID exactly. and gets called out or someone gets injured yep. and now another fighter's in. So they just had a full camp to train for each other, and you couldn't say they hated each other. I wouldn't go that far and say hate because I they. When it came to fighting, they just, you know, were trash talkers. And you see yeah, that at the end of the fight, they, they both, respect yeah. each other's game at, at the end of the day. It, and it was it was all, you know, marketing. Which, exactly. But, uh, it, it almost felt like they truly hated each other. It was a true vengeance. Or not vengeance. It was true rivalry, in a sense. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, oh, for sure. So, I love I loved the build-up to this fight. And the fight, I say, lived up to it. Because... Masvidal came out looking really good in the first round. Uh, Usman came out looking just as good as he did, you know, coming off of his uh, last fight. But there were some flaws in his game that I was skeptical about that, you know, maybe Masvidal could pull off this victory because he was trying to outstrike a striker in a sense, right? You know what you get what I'm trying to say? Although, oh, for sure, although for Usman's sure. striking ability has improved, I, I had Usman winning the yeah. fight. I had Usman winning the fight, and I love both fighters. I said, in my heart, I have Masvidal winning, but in my head, I think Usman's going to win. Yeah. Um, and I I just felt like he was setting himself up for failure for trying to outstrike a striker. Um, and it, the, it was just, you know, the way he was doing things, like he put his head down to, you know, try to throw an overhead or a hook 
in a sense. And I was like, he's going to set himself up to get knocked out by a knee, something. But in the second round, he came out looking a lot different with his striking ability. And he, you know, played the fuck out of Masvidal and thinking he was going for, you know, a takedown. And Masvidal dropped his hands. And it was, and he was trying to counter with the left. And, you know, Usman came and slumped him. Perfect timing, perfect placement. And he went out cold. Put a pillow under his head because he was sleeping before he even hit the ground. Uh, people even made memes. You know, the song where it was like, put your head on my shoulder. <laughs> because and, and they replayed it. <laughs> nah, Him nah, when, when he crazy. ricocheted off Usman's shoulder. <laughs> and then he, you know... He finished him off with some hammer fist, and even at, in the post press conference, uh, post fight press conference, they they were like, you know, he was knocked out before he hit the ground, right? You didn't, those you 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 would assume that those hits were unnecessary, and he pulled out the Masvidal card. He goes, what, what do you mean? It was super necessary. <laughs> Hell yeah, bro. I, I, I like, bro. That's what I like to hear. So man. because I, I respect U- Usman way more. I mean, I I've, I've been respecting him more and more each fight. He's definitely look, looking better and better each fight. And he's he's seems like an unstoppable force at this point. But that knockout, even Masvidal, who the man who he knocked out, you know, said he loved that moment. And not Usman as a fighter, even though he respects him. Just that moment because he has so much love for the game and he's basically addicted to the sport. Is it, like those are the the moments that he thrives off of and he, he enjoys watching. So, and unfortunately, it. He he was yeah, he was yeah. on the wrong side of that mosquito bite. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but hey, it happens to all of us, you know. So it happens to almost every fighter, you know, at some point in their career. So yeah, man, I agree, man. It was it was crazy, you know. Um, I had Usman winning that fight since the beginning. I've never had a, a little bit of doubt. I I probably could have bet my, my you know, like everything I own uh, in that <laughs> fight. And I was that sure that Masvidal was not going to win. It's just like, I, I, look, I, I get it. I, I completely understand. And you definitely saw an improvement now that he had a full, you know, Masvidal had a full camp and, you know, he was able to prepare better for, for Usman. But come on, man. Like, the, like the first fight was too one-sided. Like Masvidal had no answer, no answer at all. Like at all, and and I don't care if you get two months of. of I mean, of, I mean, of camp I, and... you gotta take that fight with a grain of salt, though. That, that, no, no, bro. That's, it's not when you get dominated like that. He got dominated every single round, no. not even a, like. Because the first, the so, first so fight, I... he 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 clearly didn't have the stamina to you know fight a full fight. And then the in the first round, he, he came out guns blazing, and it was the, the a very competitive first round. You might have Usman win that round, but it was competitive to the point where you might think he could have had a chance. After that, it was down it because Usman stalled him and put, held him up against the fence yeah. and things like that. But and, and even that, even then, Usman, not Usman, Masvidal had his takedown defense was still impressive in that short span of a time. So the fact that he had full training, he, you know, he's gonna work on his wrestling. Oh, he doesn't really need yeah. as much work on, on his striking ability because he's still one of the best oh, strikers sure, in the sure. UFC. Mm-hmm. Um, and and you can see the, the difference in uh, his take his takedown defense and and in wrestling and stuff like that too because he was able to get up, and it it didn't seem like he was struggling. Uh, as much as people, you know, might have speculated going into the fight. So, the, yes, you can say the first fight was one-sided, but that's why I said you you have to take it with a grain of salt because he because oh, he did come sure. into this fight looking like a totally different fighter. Is just yeah, just Usman caught him at the right time with the right with the that right. Didn't make, that didn't that didn't make for but for me that didn't that I. I, that, it didn't matter. It didn't matter when when you get dominated like that. I don't care, man. I don't care. Like it just it just shows that you're in a different level. And now it's even worse because now you show that you got completely dominated in the grappling department, and now you got knocked the fuck out. <laughs> so that means that you're you, you're not you're not better than him in any aspect any aspect of your game. I don't wow. like you're you're literally you're just just not you're not better than him by a lot. Now and that that was I actually I didn't agree I didn't agree with this fight I didn't like the the fact that they put this fight on that that's how that's how much I thought Usman was was better than Masvidal coming I, into I, I love I, the I selection know. in terms of making this fight happen I love it but I did think Usman was gonna it, win but I don't like I did it. think Usman was gonna Is win he... but you're saying you're you're taking a lot from Masvidal saying that he's not better than Usman in any in any aspect but the thing is look at I, look I, at the division. 
who is better than Usman in any category? <laughs> oh no, no, no! But that's that's the thing. That's the thing also. Oh, that's the thing also. You know, like for example, like when Usman, when Usman, uh, sorry, when uh, Burns was gonna fight Usman, I said, like, maybe, maybe he could beat him. But I still like, for example, we know Burns was probably probably had better jiu-jitsu than 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 Usman, right? And but that didn't, didn't matter and that's why because he didn't go to the ground. No, 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 but not even exactly, exactly, not even just that. Like, I mean, believe me, Usman, his Usman grappling is probably good enough to, 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 to the point that he will make burn. You know, at least not be able to control him. You know, so I, I agree, bro. Usman is just in another level right now. That's the thing. That, that that's, that's my that, another thing too. Exactly. You know, I'm, I'm not hating on Masvidal, bro. I, you know, I don't hate on anybody. I really don't. You know, I'm just, I'm just, uh, I say that because uh, to tell you how good. Usman is, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's the, I say that because I, I, I didn't think he was gonna be Usman. Not because I, I, I think Masvidal is bad at all. I think it's because I think Usman is just too good, you know. And 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 yeah, for sure, you know. I mean, look, you know, like now I, I wasn't expecting a knockout like that. You no, know, either, I don't think anybody. You know? was. I know what it was, you know. So, so I mean, but that's what I'm saying, you know. Like like now he even proved you, like, hey man, like I didn't could like you know, now it's just not just about my grappling, you know. I can do anything now, you know. So. Yeah, we're seeing really like a scary. I I, scary. I think Usman has the potential to be like like a Khabib, like a GSP, you know, like like well, a like a Jim well, he, Jones. He's, he's he already in that, that conversation with GSP because he's one of the yeah. greatest water water weights of he, all time. He should be. Um, he should be. Yeah. He, he's mm-hmm. aiming for the greatest of all time, which is GSP. Um, people are now putting him in a conversation with Khabib because he's retired. So they're saying, oh, I would have loved to see that fight, or they're they're saying now that. Uh, Khabib is retired. Usman is the new Khabib, which you can see the comparisons because <laughs> kind of because yeah. he's very dominant on the ground uh, and his grappling grappling ability. And Khabib was improving with his striking ability because of DC, who was was uh, training uh, on his team. And now Usman is getting better with his striking um, now that he is with the new camp. So and with a new team, so his striking ability is improving now too, which. Is even scarier because now you not only have to worry about yeah. his takedown um, ability, but the fact that he can knock you out. Because it's not like he just knocked out yeah. Masvidal. He's he's not he knocked out where well, you can pretty much you say he, he yeah, yeah. Uh, Burns was TKO. Um, yeah, yeah. Woodley and Masvidal Wood, one of the he, best he one of the too. best strikers in the division. You know, I agree yeah. with you when you said that he, exactly. You know, so imagine that. You know, you literally knocked completely out. Probably the best boxer, one of the best strikers in the division. It's, you know? it's so, crazy because hey. it's only April. April of, of yeah. 2021. And two of the best strikers in McGregor and Masvidal, who's never been knocked out, and, and both of them never been knocked out in their yeah. careers, have been knocked out this year. In, in the yeah. four months that we've had in 2021, both of them ha- were <laughs> knocked out for the first time ever in this year, which is just means this year is a crazy year for UFC and, and MMA. So... It's been crazy already. It's it's amazing. It's mind blowing. We already know what's next for Usman. They've worked. It was the this next fight was in the works before the Masvidal fight even happened, which was Kobe Covington. I as he should be. Yeah, he he's deserving of another chance. I don't think, but I don't think anyone can touch this man in that division. I I agree. Going into this fight, this Covington fight. I feel like everyone's going to pick Usman to win this fight. I don't. I don't think anyone outside of Covington and yeah. his camp will pick Covington to you know truly win this uh, this fight. Um, the, then um, the other competitors for the the title could possibly be Leon Edwards um, if he beats uh, Nate Diaz. Nate people Diaz. have talked. He should, of, people have talked about Nate Diaz possibly if he was able to beat. Uh, no. to, uh, well, if he's able to beat Leon Edwards, uh, I know he he probably get it. If he well, wins. yeah, if, he, yeah, if he's crazy. able to beat Leon Edwards, I think Usman yeah. would be stupid not to take that fight because that's a money fight. Yeah, money yeah, fight. So, yeah. I, I so, agree, hundred percent. So, That's why he took the Masvidal fight again. Oh yeah, <laughs> he, he he would. He, exactly. Why wouldn't he do that? So exactly, uh, exactly. So we know this division is very competitive, but we also agree that no one's touching this man in terms of like his ability. Well, so, well, okay. Go. I mean, look. I think if anybody has a good chance of beating him right now, it's Covington. I think I think he has the best chance of beating him because he does. The first fight was very. I think the first fight was you know it was very close and and I mean yeah at the end he knocked him out but the whole fight was a close fight and and you he know made it to the and, fifth and round. who knows. 
we haven't really exactly, and we haven't really seen Covington fight too much after. So, I mean, if 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 we see you know Usman improving this much, why wouldn't Covington be able to improve this much? Now, with that said, I'm not picking Covington at all. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, he's definitely his biggest threat right now. Yeah. But I mean, listen. If Usman beat Covington, then then yeah, I mean, he's gonna have to have. I mean, it's fine if they put Nate or or, or anybody because <laughs> at, the, at that point, at that point, really, it's gonna be almost like you know, like well, we'll see who can beat him. You know, it's gonna be like Anderson Silva when he was in his prime. You know, it's kind of like everybody that's going in. You kind of know, you know, Anderson Silva's gonna yeah, win. So, you know, until somebody finally beats so, him. So, I, you seen you seen Usman progressively get better. Like from the first Masvidal oh, yeah. fight to when he fought Burns to now, he's he's gotten better and better in some sort of category. Like his, his striking was very noticeable in terms of the progress he made in the Burns fight, and then from the Burns fight to to the this second Masvidal fight, which was a yep. two month span, the difference that it made in terms of his striking ability. Like he showcased his jab against Burns, and that's essentially what what made the was the big difference. But to outstrike a striker. And you know, beat a, a yeah. striker, one of the best strikers in the UFC, on your feet. That just goes to show the the the, the leap that you made in terms of that that category. Um, so, Usman is just an animal. Covington, he deserves a second chance. I'm not saying he doesn't, yeah, but for sure. I, no, I don't think anyone's picking him. I definitely won't be picking him. Uh, yeah, and, if, if anyone else in that division deserves a chance, I'd probably say Leon Edwards, but. Um, for, for sure, I've been pounding the table. I know it's not going to happen because I, I mentioned this before he even said anything about it. I, I told Jovan, I don't think he'll... I, I've been banging on the, t- the table for the, for the fact that I think Usman needs to move up in in, in a weight class because I, he's just too big for the rest of the people in his weight, in his weight, in his division. So he's too big in terms of his, his body type. Um, he's just a freak of nature. He's just a super, he's yeah, super yeah, dominant. He's, he's. But, but I went out and said, I don't think he's going to move up to middleweight until Adesanya yeah. moves up to light heavyweight permanently because he, he likes the fact that, you know, the UFC has three, uh, UFC, uh, champions oh, from course. Africa. He's yeah, friends they're, they're, him, they're all he's friends. Not gonna, so, gonna so he's not him, yeah. he's not gonna do that. And have, should Adesanya have beat Jan, he most likely would have stayed there permanently, and and Usman would have moved up. But the fact that he lost and he's back down to middleweight, it, oh, he has to fight it, now. <laughs> it, it's, it's not gonna happen. Um, exactly. But I would like to him to move up, not just to fight Adesanya, but I just feel like in that division he has uh, he has more competitors, like. Besides Adesanya, you have you have Whitaker, you have Costa, you have mm-hmm. Vettatori, you got Kenanier, Brunson, uh, Darren Till. Yeah, but, you got a couple. Yeah, of, you got are, a couple guys. Those are some interesting fights that I would like Usman or fighters that I would like Usman to go up against. Now, should he fight Adesanya? I think that would be a really good uh, battle because Adesanya yeah, is one of the best strikers, yeah. you know, in the UFC as well. And Usman oh, yeah. is just on another level in terms of his wrestling ability. And I, I think if they were to fight, I think Usman would win. Because, yeah, me because too, actually. <laughs> after what we've seen with Adesanya against Jan, you don't he doesn't like to, he seems to be very uncomfortable on the ground. And that's and that's what Usman would do. He'll bring you he'll bring you to the, the deepest part of the ocean, um oh, for should, sure, for uh, sure. should he need to you know, win a fight. So I don't see it happening, but I would like to see him move up just just because I, I think he 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 can get the that goat stamp should he move up. Um, eventually. Oh yeah, yeah. If he would do, he would do yeah, that. So, so I think yeah. I think he'll move up, but not immediately. I think it'll probably take a couple more fights, be, um, until he clears out the division, which he already has. But you know, clear him out for good, and then he's gonna have no choice but to move up. Um, I mean, GSP moved up for one fight when he came out of retirement and, yeah, and yeah. won. Mm-hmm. So if and, and he yeah, if he's not? chasing GSP. Well, he, he he's, he's gonna move up. <laughs> it's a good point. He's gonna move up. So, uh, and and a lot of people seem to want to be that double champ. I think Usman, as competitive as he is, he's going to want to be a double champ, even if that means he has to go up against his friend down the road. As much as he doesn't want to, it it could very possibly happen. So, um, I would like for him to move up eventually, but we'll we'll have to see on that one. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, yeah, I, I don't think he'll ever fight because they're also both from Nigeria and, like, I would never fight a guy from Peru. So, <laughs> like, yeah. 
<laughs> like as a, I mean, unless you know, but I mean, it'll have to be different, you know. So like, oh, who knows? But I agree, actually. I mean, I never really thought about that him going up, but I mean, yeah, exactly. He's not gonna go up while Sanya is there. But if Sanya does go to like light heavyweight, oh, for sure, bro. And actually, yeah, that would be really cool, you know. And oh yeah, Usman, bro, he's so good that he would still probably destroy most people anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. And yeah. I, I just like the matchups, the, the, the you know the matchup possibilities that he could possibly have moving moving up. Um, and with Anasanya, let's say he moved, he's gonna he's gonna try to make the difference in terms or make the improvements that you know were, were inevitable in the fight against Jan, so he can move up and possibly fight Jan again. Um, but he's it's gonna take some time to you know work on that. But as talented as he is in every other category, he's gonna try to perfect that one thing that you know was flawed in his game. And if he's chasing John Jones, like we all know he is. Um, cause he seems to, you know, mention him yeah. every chance he gets, he's, he's going to have to work on his ground game and it, uh, because that we know how talented John Jones is in that aspect and he, he can't lose moving forward. If he even wants a chance to fight John Jones, oh, even yeah, though yeah. that he chance just... is almost out the window, the yeah, window's halfway closed, yeah. 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 especially it was, it was open and then, and it was, you know, slowly closing already. But the fact that he lost against Jan, it's halfway closed and yep. the, the chance of it happening is slim to none. But in order for it to even happen, he has to like win out for probably oh, yeah. for, for pretty much the rest of his career. Years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, look, if you think about it, John Jones has never even lost, so he's only lost yeah. because he knocked out a guy in a legal way that shouldn't be legal. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, that, that, that's what I'm saying. You know, at that point, he's never lost. The, the John Jones has never lost, and and yeah, the Sanjay already lost once exactly, <laughs> and you know, like John Jones went to heavyweight. So, I think it's gonna be very hard for us to see that fight. But, you know, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, it's so many options, man. The UFC is just, the, you know, it's just the, the UFC. The, the UFC is the best it's been. In, uh, oh, for sure. Oh, like right oh, now, for sure. this for current sure. day, it's the best it's been. For and, sure. And I love boxing. And I, and people, you know, are questioning why, like, is boxing dying down? I don't think the sport is dying down. I think, you know... Because the sport is still going to be very popular. It's going to be a very popular oh, sport yeah. regardless. Yeah, oh, yeah. So now in terms of recruiting the, the, the younger fan base, I understand that. Because now the UFC is more appealing because it's more gruesome. Um, You're fighting the best of the best. Whereas boxing, there's yeah. a lot of factors. No, it's just so gruesome. It's, it's, it's like real fight. You know, it's like when you watch a UFC fight, you're watching like a real fight. You know, you're not watching like a, like a fix. You know, it's like watching like a karate fight or like a taekwondo fight. There's a fixed set of rules that make it not like realistic. You yeah. know, like when you watch the UFC, you're watching almost like the the full product. You know, like everything. You know, like you watch boxing is very limited to you know your hands. You know, you watch karate is very limited to one thing. You watch wrestling is you know just that one thing. Yeah. You watch jiu-jitsu is one thing. But you watch the UFC, you got everything. You so, know? so I think that's what people also but, like it so much. Well, yeah, but my my thing in terms of boxing is. Um, there's a lot of factors in terms of making matchups. So it's not just like the yeah. Oh, so, so sure, the, sure. the fighters might want to fight a certain fighter, yep. but you know their team and uh their promotions their, their promotions have a lot of influence on who they fight next. But then 100%. it's it's not even just their promotions. It's the, the so each division has like four titles, and those titles have their yep. own promotion, and those promotions have influence on what they want as your next fight if should you be champion um, which i find stupid and oh 100% and, and, I, I, and it's it's boxing so the fact that they have four titles per division is wild to me i think there should if, only be one but um the fact that those promotions have as much influence as they do for like what's next in their division is mind boggling exactly. because exactly just just use just use the um heavyweight division in boxing as an example um Anthony Joshua is, is finally going to fight Tyson Fury. Like, everyone has been talking about Anthony Joshua being one of the best in that division for some time now. It's been him, Wilder, and Fury. And now that he's finally he's finally going to fight Fury after years of, you know, him, Fury and Wilder claiming like he's been, you yeah, know, running. Yeah, they're the best. So, yeah. and, and it's part of it is not him, but it's his promotion and the, the title's promotions. Like, oh, 100. It's, it's it literally, I don't, it, it looks like it kind of, it kind of even sounds like, like, do you guys not really, you guys don't see what's going on? Like, do you guys not realize, yeah. like, what you're doing is actually hurting the sport more, you know? It's yeah. like, yeah, I you, agree, you, but you it's crazy. Like, for example, like the Ryan Garcia with the, the Lopez and yeah, the other the, the, the light, guy. The, the, light, not, the, the lightweight it's, 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 it's crazy. Why, why can't they just all fight each other, you know? Yeah. Just make them all fight. Like, that's what people want to see, you know? And, the, and, 
Those... I, I agree. It's just hurting the sport, you know. And then Those... yeah, but, I mean, like I said, I, it's, it's it, I think it's a little bit of everything, you know. You get you have that that plays a huge part. Now you have like the UFC, then and not just the UFC. I mean, like MMA growing in general as a sport, sure. you know. Like you know, MMA is growing more and more. Now you see like you know one championship. You got like Bellator that's huge. You got the PFL that's getting bigger, you know. So like. MMA as a sport is keeps keeps growing and keeps growing and keeps growing and then and then boxing and and part of not not just what you were talking about but also that you know like you see a, a sport of MMA growing and boxing is just kind of the same you know and so yeah I mean it's, that's it's very old fashioned it, sure. and they're not oh, you know oh, they're, 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 they're they're not yeah. modernizing their game like yeah. the UFC uh-huh. is so and, exactly. and that and that's my thing is young fans like us we want to see the best fight the best like you can't call 100%. yourself the best if you're not fighting the best like 100%. so that, that's like someone in the UFC winning the vacant title of their division and not and calling themselves the best but they're not fighting the true champion of that division to but the thing is the UFC doesn't let that happen. Like, doesn't let that you, happen. Ever. Like if you're the vacant champion you're fighting the the champion next <laughs> yeah. to well, determine like, who's and- the best in that division. And like everybody always talks about, like in the UFC, there's no like, there's no like gimme fights, you know. There's you're no you're literally as soon as you make it to the UFC, you're gonna be thrown against another guy that's also like a monster, you know. And yeah. and if you win, your next fight's gonna be harder. And if you win, <laughs> your next fight is gonna be harder. And there's no like, there's no like discussion about that. You know, that's how it's gonna be, and that's how it should be. It's always it's always about merit, you know, who deserves. Always obviously. When you make it to the top, you're gonna get the guys that you know obviously bring money, and that's different. But that's that's a merit on its own, you know. Like if you make more money for the company, then yeah, you should probably deserve to, you know, be noticed more and be put more in the spot. So, so yeah, it should always be about merit, you know, who deserves it more, you know. If you win and get a fight, then fight somebody better, you know. And I agree, man. That's for sure. That's what happens in the UFC. Always the best against the best, and that's why we like it so much. You and that's know? why we like it so much. That's why it's growing as a sport. <laughs> um, yeah. It, and that's why it's the best it's ever been. Um, yeah. and, and it has j- probably the best talent it's ever had. Oh, for sure, 100%. I, I still remember yeah. playing the video games where I was Chuck Liddell <laughs> and Tito Ortiz and and how big of you know of a sport it was then, and it wasn't even that big yet. So now yeah. to yeah. get the talent that they have now and it being global is, is phenomenal. So I, I commend them for doing what they did, and I think yeah. partnering with, the, the, with ESPN – is even better oh, because deal. now you have fight nights on ESPN and then ESPN plus with that platform and now having, you know, their pay-per-views there. I, I think it's only growing because now ESPN is covering that sport some more. Yeah. And not just that, but like also now fine, you know, now that the sport has been, well, it's been for 1995 was the first year the UFC had an event or three. You means it's already been almost like 20, 25 years. The sport has been around more mainstream. That means that you're actually, you're able to recruit, younger kids that maybe before like imagine like at Usman right maybe if Usman would have came to the U.S. 20 years ago maybe he would have played football or, or he would just wrestle or basketball yeah. you know but now they're able to recruit those kids maybe like a you know a kid that was going to play football you know a kid that was going to play basketball you know like there was a really good athlete instead of doing that now those, a lot not, not everybody yeah. obviously but like now some of those kids are also you know being you know brought into the sport and that's helping the sport too you they're, know? they're creating they're creating pipelines for for the youth and you know yeah, avenues I, I, for them doing to, a lot. I, I, providing avenues for you know the younger generation to uh or pipe for avenues for the the for up and coming athletes, yeah. uh, you can say, and I and the and they're looking to bring back the Ultimate Fighter. Uh, yeah, they I, are. Yeah, I forget who they announced were the the coaches, but they're they're bringing it back, and I yeah, I, it was it was big then, um, but it's going to be even bigger now because of the yeah. ESPN platform and the ESPN Plus yeah. platform, and, and I, I think 100%. it's going to be better than than what it was. Yeah. There there was flaws in what they had. But with with the way the UFC is now and how big it is and the the resources that they have, um, it it's de- should definitely be better. Um, I think it's uh, gonna be Volkanovski and uh, Ortega. I think. Yes. So yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, and man. I think that's, that's, gonna that's be in fun, June. Man. It's gonna be fun. Yeah, it's gonna be fun, bro. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> so so before we go, I had one question because it was about a future fight. So, uh, me and Jovan touched on this fight in the past, but. May fifteenth, Oliveira Chandler. Oh my for, God! For, 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 you... for, uh. for the you know the vacant lightweight title, who do you have winning that fight? 
Um, I, I, I'll tell you who I picked. I don't recall who Javon picked, but uh, I'll, I'll let you have the you. floor. And um, who, who do you have? So I, I hate that you asked me that question because <laughs> I literally, I literally uh, was talking about that this weekend, and it seems like everybody's going for Chandler. Like a lot of people are going for Chandler. But what I don't understand is how can you be going for Chandler after? Oliveira is in an 8-5 winning streak with seven finishes. The last one wasn't a finish, but he beat Ferguson. Like, like, how can how can you like overlook him like that? Like, like, look, Chandler is a monster. You know, he's been a champion in Bellator. You know, he's fought like really tough competition. Look, I get all of that. You know, but but you cannot look past Oliveira. I actually I, look. It's I, it's this is one of the hardest fights I ever like because <laughs> like it really and it's always this hard for me to pick fights usually. And you already know but, the, the winner is fighting uh, Poirier. Should he beat oh, uh, McGregor again? Of course, well, yeah, exactly. You know, and actually, I think maybe even if McGregor wins, they probably even throw him there because that's how the UFC is. But well, he's, he's, um, the cash co- he's the cash exactly, cost. Exactly. You know, and it makes sense. Like I said, hey, you know, he brings money to the company. <laughs> I understand. It, you know, so but okay. But with that, all that said, I'm gonna if I had to pick right now. Uh, I would pick Oliveira. I think I think Oliveira, you know, I don't, you know, I think Oliveira. He's shown that he could do everything. You know, he's he's been in the UFC for a long time, for a long, long time. He's been fighting for a while. He used to fight at 145. Now he's 155. You know, he's been killing it. You know, he's been like, you know, destroying it. The the only thing I I do have doubts is maybe like the big the big stage. You know, how is he gonna feel when he's on like because we we have never seen him there and that that affects fighters. That's the only thing, and I think that doesn't affect Chandler, for example. But with that said, like, I, I can't, for me, I can't count on that because I'm just looking at him as a fighter. I'm not looking at him as, as, as a, if he's going to have nerves or not in the day of the fight. You know, I don't, <laughs> I don't care about that, you know, yeah. which it could happen. But if I have to think about, like, fighting, I, I think, I think Oliveira takes it. I think, I think, I don't know. I, it's really hard for me to pick. Chandler is amazing. You know, he knocked out, um, he knocked out okay. uh, a hooker, you know, easily. His wrestling is amazing. He's aggressive. Uh, but I still, I'm going to take Oliveira just for the fact that he's been in the UFC for a long time. Yeah. Uh, you know, he has that, you know, like that, you know, UFC experience, which is, you know, different, you for know. Sure. And, and, and and he's been killing it. You know, he's seven out of the last eight fights, seven finishes. Tony Ferguson, huge name, you know. People are like, oh, he's, he's done. I'm like, I don't care if he's done, bro. If you beat Tony Ferguson at any point in his life, he's a good win, so, you know. So he's a bit, definitely on the down spin in his career. I I hope he, re- he redeems himself on May yeah. 15th because he's fighting, he's fighting uh, D- Dariush. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So he's fighting him, and, I, and hopefully he redeems himself because if not, he's literally on the same boat as Tyron Woodley. Um, yeah. So, and we we don't we I hope both of them somehow redeem themselves if possible. Mm-hmm. But um, well, so, Tyron Woodley just got cut from the UFC, so. But yeah. that doesn't mean he can't redeem himself. Oh, oh! I hope he I hope so, he fights somewhere so, else. So, but I, I think I think he should retire. <laughs> but if he goes somewhere yeah. else, hopefully he, re- he he redeems himself. Uh, mm-hmm. But Ferguson, while he's in the UFC, hopefully he yeah. can you know make a comeback and and end this two fight losing streak because both of those losses were bad. Um, but yeah. to speak about uh, Olivier Chandler, I told you I would let you know who I picked. I picked Chandler uh, to win the fight, but it's not, I'm not overlooking o- Olivier at all. It is a tough fight to pick. Um, I talked to you before. I felt like Poirier should have been in the, the conversation for this fight. Oh, he should have fought. Them, but yeah. but they offered him the fight first, and he rather fight for the McGregor. The McGregor Which I understand. It's, it's, yeah, I understand yeah. too. It's a <laughs> fight. And he, should he beat McGregor again, he's gonna get the title shot anyway. Um, one hundred percent. But Chandler, the reason why I picked him, uh, I feel I feel like out of anyone in the division, on, on the top of the division, I should say, uh, Chandler has the best bet or the best chance to beating Oliveira and his uh, fighting style. Just because Olivier yeah. is, he's phenomenal in pretty much every aspect of the game. So, and I think Chandler is, ju- is just as well rounded. Um, he's he's he's, a, he, he's <laughs> his wrestling ability is top notch, and we've seen what he can do on on his feet. Just look at his first fight in the UFC. Yeah. He knocked out Dan Hooker, who was I believe top six in the division at the time, or top five. Um, mm-hmm. So, he in in that in. He did it in quick fashion at that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think the reason why I picked Chandler is his championship experience, and although it wasn't in the UFC, it was in Bellator. Mm-hmm. He's fought the best of the best outside of the UFC. 
He has that championship mindset. And that's why I would have picked Chandler should he have fought Gaethje. Because they're very similar fighters. But Gaethje seems to, you know... His corner seems to have to calm him down in a sense. Um, because he gets, uh, like, overwhelmed. More excited, or, or yeah. gets excited. <laughs> um, so, yeah. And that kind of hurts him in the end sometimes. Whereas Chandler, he's been there before. He's, you know... he His nerves or his, you know... He seems to be very... He, he knows how to stay... Keep his um, I'm trying to. He he knows how to stay like composed, you know, re- relax, yeah. and compose. Uh, yeah. in like big situations, should he get stunned, he knows not to freak out because that's when you know you fuck up. So yeah, that's yeah. all the reason why I'm picking Chandler. That, this fight. And, and that's what I'm saying. Like I I mean I can't put that into play for me. Yeah. For me, I think about ability, you know, not. But it could happen that Oliveira gets to that point and he's like. <laughs> I'm fighting for you, the championship, you know, and, and and he and he gasses in the first round like I did, you know. So like, so like, it's always a chance. There's always a possibility, but but I think like skills wise, I I think maybe Oliveira has a little edge, you know. So he has, he's hey the most submissions in UFC history. So they're, they're both talented. And they're both super yeah. well rounded. So I, like I said, I think Chandler just has the best chance of beating Oliveira. So if, if Oliveira can get over the, uh, if he can get past Chandler, it's gonna be hard to find someone that can you know beat. Yeah. Him. Um, yeah. Unless you know Khabib comes out of retirement, then then that's not going to so, be a question. That's what I wanted to tell you. That's <laughs> what I wanted to tell you, bro. So for me, this is what I would like to happen. Okay, this is my my ideal scenario I've thought in my head. All right, all right. So all so, so be, before you end, before you say what you have to say, this is this is what well, after this uh, we're wrapping up the episode. But uh, so we'll end it with this bang. So Nico drop drop the gem on. All right. Uh, all right. <laughs> so this is my ideal scenario, right? Oliveira beats Chandler. Poirier beats McGregor. Then McGregor fights Oliveira, and Oliveira beats Poirier. And that impresses Khabib, so he has to come out of retirement. Wait, wait, so you mean Poirier fights Oliveira, and, and he beats... Yeah, Oliveira. after he wins, and Oliveira wins. Oliveira beats Chandler, and Oliveira beats Poirier. Yeah. And then, and then let's, let's say Oliveira fights... Gaethje or somebody else and wins again. Yeah. Maybe, maybe they'll, they'll, you know, Khabib said he only wants to come back for someone impressive. If you see a, if, if a guy, that's him, that's him. That would be really impressive. Because he'd be on so, a, he'd be on a win streak. He'd be the not, he'd best be the of top the best. guys. Um, yeah. and he's never fought him before, and he seems to like new exactly. challenges. But exactly. my question to you is, if uh Chandler beats Oliveira, for example, right, and then he beats, let's say. Both McGregor and Poirier, because they're not gonna just not have McGregor yeah, fight yeah. for the title eventually. Exactly. So yeah. let, let's say let's say he beats Poirier, and then you know next fight up would would be probably McGregor, or he fights McGregor and then Poirier. Let's say he beats all three. Do you think Khabib would come out of retirement and fight him? McGregor or Chandler? Oh, Chandler. We know he's so, gonna come. So we know he's gonna come out and fight was, McGregor should the opportunity that. comes about. But yeah, it, because. I don't think I don't think I don't think uh, I don't think Khabib comes back for McGregor anyways. But yes, I, if, I think if, he does for money reasons. But he's not chasing money. No, nah, not even. So exactly. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But but I think Chandler has to be even more impressive because because like I said, that would put that would put Oliveira on like a what like a ten. 11 fight winning streak, you know, like, like that's, you know, like at the end of the day, uh, Chandler would have came for another, you know, uh, of course, look, as long, if I could see Khabib fight again in the UFC, I don't care who, who he fights against, bro. I just want to see Khabib fight again. You know, that's all I want. I don't care who it is against. I'm just saying, hopefully, he comes back. And he's, he needs to be somebody impressive, you know. So, so I'm saying, so maybe if, if wanted, or it, So, maybe he, maybe he comes back, but instead of fighting lightweight, he goes up and fights Walter Wade and he yeah, fights uh, yeah. Kamaru Usman. Oh, well, maybe. But they're friends, so I, I, Khabib's one of those guys that he's not gonna be like fight. He's, he's not gonna yeah, fight. I, I get they're friends, but, yeah. but sometimes I know, I know. Sometimes hey, it's listen. all about legacy. I'll and, be and, down, bro. And, and should, he, down. should he beat Usman? <laughs> I, I think that would be his best win in his career. Oh, for sure, for easily. sure. Easily, um, easy. But yeah. I, it, it has to be something enticing, and I, I think what well, yeah. the thing what Usman's doing is it, it will, will entice him. Uh, but, oh yeah, but yeah. I I don't think he'll move up at all. I think he yeah, wants to stay either. lightweight. So I think the the chances that he comes out of retirement will be McGregor. Should McGregor, you know, be Poirier, be Olivier yeah, Chandler, everybody. so he yeah. has to obviously win a few. But that's the yeah. money fight, and that's what would you know bring him out. Because Dana was chirping in his ear saying the second fight would be de- definitely be better than the first fight uh, in terms of numbers. 
But I think Oliveira and Chandler, in terms of challenge, abilities, he's never fought them before. Yeah. I think those Pro- would probably be the best options in terms yeah. of coming out of retirement for just Pro- probably, legacy yeah. reasons. Yeah. Probably those, probably those are only three options. Probably you're right. That's probably only the only. The, it's either Oliveira Chandler or McGregor if he like wins like three fights in a row or something like that. You know, against yeah, like but, everybody. I think by that time both of them will be too old that anyone gives a shit. Exactly. You know. So <laughs> well, I mean, if if it's only like in two years, I'll be down still. You know, if it's like in like four years, maybe maybe not. You know, so we'll but, see. But uh, before we go, Nico, drop your uh, drop you know your social medias where everyone can find you. Uh, and let them know. Yeah, bro. Just uh, hey, before I, I do any of that, just uh, I appreciate the support, you know, all the time. I, I fought last weekend, you know, uh, Sunday. I lost the decision. It was a really good fight, actually. Got fight of the night. So, you know, I thought I got destroyed, and then I watched the video, and actually, it was pretty. <laughs> it was actually a pretty good fight. I just uh. Yeah, you know, it was it was a really good fight. You know, a lot of, it's gonna be a lot of experience, and uh, you know, for me and and yeah, man, just keep going forward. My Instagram, Nico and Kalari. So you know, uh, yeah, just follow me if you want. <laughs> so, yeah. So if you're watching, uh, that's why his eyes are a little swollen. Uh, if, if you were wondering, uh, if you're tuning in and you know and just listening, I don't uh, know which one so you, you don't you don't get to see it, but uh, <laughs> feel free to you know go to our YouTube channel and, and check it out. Exactly, exactly. Go uh, check it out on YouTube. If but you can't hear. <laughs> I personally watched the live stream of his fight, and he's he is right. It was fighting the night. He got even got an award for it. Um, but it, it was he he it was a very close fight. So it it was only his second fight, amateur wise. So you're he's gonna be able to you know learn from it, which is no no problem. But 100%. He, but he could easy he could have easily came out with the win just as much as he walked out with the with the loss. It was that close. Um, so. I, 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 that, I just bro. so although we su- we support you, we're always gonna support you. You always support us. We, we you know <laughs> we reflect the the love you give. Um, but we just want to say that you know Jovan and I, I'll speak for both of us. We're proud of you. So just keep up the good work and uh, <laughs> Thanks, and just and just learn from from uh this experience honestly. Exactly. exactly. Um, but go follow him uh, on Instagram if you haven't already. He's been on the show plenty of times. For you, <laughs> for you have the opportunity to do so. Um, it, but if you're new to the show, this is your chance. Uh, so go go follow him. Go show love uh, whenever he posts about his um, his, his MMA uh, experience and is and uh, things like that. Or uh, what is it, Muay Thai? Yeah, right Show now love. it's my tie, so Show eventually maybe. Um, so. <laughs> but in, in, until then, until next time, uh, you know, already you already know what to do. Check out our mock draft episode because you know the NFL draft is this Thursday, and we dropped a mock draft episode, oh, yeah. a bonus episode, and you go go tune into that. I mean, this episode alone is gonna drop Wednesday, so you have enough time to go check out our mock draft episode after you check this one out. So go do so. We worked hard on it. It was. <laughs> I know it's a little extra long, but. It's it's for it's for good uh it's for a good cause it's good for good exactly. reason so um go show love go watch that if you haven't already and until next time peace bye guys you're talking about balls deep I'm talking about balls deep we're talking about balls deep in love I'm talking about balls deep my boy is talking about balls deep we're talking about balls deep in love